As the United Nations marked the International Day to End Karedu for Journalists, Safety and Security Watch for Lagos, do one group with the theme Safety and Security Implicate of Welfare of Journalists for Niger. The media was lighting uh, this now to know the level of Bugay, especially of Karedu for Journalists, Safety Sabi Sabi people, when we say that they the group call on journalists to provide fight against the risks for their own way. We don't see or feel the journalists being adequately protected. Journalists uh, do a whole lot of work and uh, the work are characterized with high level of risk. And this risk are never considered before they are being released for their beats. We think employers of labor in the field of journalism should look inward towards the safety, security, health and well-being of journalists. And this is very crucial, even at this time where journalists are made to work excess hours and having a whole of impact on their health and mental well-being. I think this needs to be looked at I mean, while creating structure in their employment um, paradigm. First, have a profile of where the journalist is being released to, to go and do their job. If it's too risky, nobody wants the journalist to break news at, his own, at the expense of his life. We don't want to hear news that is broken by a journalist today and the journalist broke the news and died. It's not, it's not a gain to anyone. If it's risky, let's see it as a, as a risky area and should not be sent there. If it should be sent there, you will be sent there with a whole lot of security coverage. You know? And one of the things we have said here, which of course you heard earlier on, we don't need to have all the media houses having all their journalists being sent to a particular spot. There should be information sharing amongst all the, journal, all the media houses, but just give credit, I mean copyright credit to who has information. i give you an example, we are, we are you're taking a report from a very high security area in maybe Sambisa Forest. Why will channels be there? Uh, I, um, Plus TV is there, AIT is there, having about six journalists in that place. We will actually come together, mobilize one journalist to so take that report, then we all share the report. Information sharing should it will reduce the high risk that we expose our journalists to in the first place. I feel every journalist to your own self, your safety is very paramount and it's crucial to you. Your safety first. Before you go into any beat, try to find out information about that environment you are going into. Look for how you can keep yourself safe. Because if you go there without having background information about that environment, you wouldn't even know how volatile the place is and you could put yourself in a very high risk that is uncalculated and you, could, you may end up not returning. Before you go on any beat, try and do a research, have a study or a survey of what risks that characterize that beat before you go and profile those risks. Any risk that is profiled can be mitigated. If the risks are not profiled, you can mitigate it. You are the one responsible for your, for your own safety. You must profile those risks and create mitigations before you go for touch bits. The, 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 the press is also an industry. And there are laws that are guiding operation of industries in Nigeria. There is uh, what we call the Employees' Compensation Act of 2010. Today, NSITF is operating that. Are the journalists in that, in that role? Are they being insured for anything? Uh, are there hazard allowance for, for the journalists? So these are a lot, there are a lot of things to be, to be looked at. Oh, talk about the safety and security of the journalists. Now, if we want to take it further, a, a journalist is assigned to cover an event. What is the risk assessment that has been done in that event? Okay, there is riot going on, and a journalist needs to cover. Yes, they wear their beep and say this is a press. But again, the illiterate does not know what press is. Whoever wants to seek attention looks for the journalists because they know they will be covered. So those are the risk assessments that are supposed to be conducted before the journalist will embark on whatever role he is going to, to, to do, carry out in covering that event. So you find out that one, are there risk assessment conducted before it's sent back upon? Are there insurance cover for them? If there are not, what is the government doing today? Uh, today, Nigeria is a signatory to the, to the uh, 2nd November uh, convention by the UN. Now, if we are doing that, what law has our government put in place to protect the journalists? So these things, issues are a lot. Myriad of issues that the journalists are exposed to in the industry. Yes. The first thing that needs to be done is an assessment of the structures in place for safety and security. 
as I said inside, it cannot be assessed on a situational basis. But from a long-term perspective, there need to be continuity and processes that are put in place from induction into the profession through support in recovery and rehabilitation. That's what needs to be done, in my opinion. Legality cannot be spoken of in safety and security without the standing guides and rules. Something is legal against the benchmark or illegal against the benchmark. In the absence of that in this profession, what is legality? Is it defined by the person? It's an opinion, therefore. So legality can only be defined within a set structure with clear rules and definitions of what is legal and what is not. Until we get to that point of definitions, then the safety and security still remains ambiguity and ambiguity in that industry. Thank you.